everyone. Today is Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. Time is 2 p.m. Officially calling this meeting to order. It is our weekly uh, BOCC business meeting attending commissioners <clears throat> Duncan Brooks and Filios. Allison, you get to lead us in the pledge. Yeah. Okay, so our first item is to approve the, wow, the consent calendar. I move that we approve the consent calendar as listed on our business meeting agenda for September 21st, 2021. I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye, and the motion's carried. Payables list, please. I move that we approve the payables um, for the week of September 13th through 17th, 2021, in the amount of $559,644.83. There are no jury panel payments. I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye. Motion's carried. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Um, we have an amended agenda, and that was for um, item number 15. There was an additional name brought up for the public defender contracts. So I move that we accept our amended agenda um, for September 21st. I just got a question. Yeah. Was it added uh, in 48 hours? Uh, yes. Because that needs to be some kind of record of why, why it needs to be removed. Like there's an urgency or was it a can't wait? Um, their thing expires October 1st. <coughs> so it was just a clerical error, whereas excluded from the agenda. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's time since it Yeah, okay. All right, so then I move that we accept the amended agenda um, for item 15 being time sensitive for expiring contracts. I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye, and the motion's carried. <clears throat> Excuse me, first action item. First amendment to the Kootenai County Recyclables Processing Agreement with Waste Management of Idaho. Is it JP for solid waste? Um, I went ahead, commissioners, and brought Angela Bergeson with us, our new Go business ahead, and finance manager, to present. Hello, commissioners. Uh, Angela Bergeson, for the record. Uh, the Solid Waste Department would like to enter into a one year contract extension for Bluebird Recycling to continue processing our recycled materials. Okay. It is the same pricing as before, and we've maintained a good working relationship with them and them with us. So we request that you approve and sign the one-year contract extension. Okay. Okay. Motion. I move that we approve the First Amendment to the Kootenai County Recyclables Processing Agreement with Bluebird and, I guess, Waste Management of Idaho. Is it both names? It is. I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye, and the motion's carried. Second item, master agreement for software and support license with computer arts, county assistance. Shelley? Shelley Amos, for the record, we have our annual contract that we renew for the software for our program for um, the police holds and medical, and the increase is $145 for the whole year. So it would be $4,995 for the year to continue our contract. Okay. Any questions? Nope. Bill, motion? Uh, I move that we approve the master agreement with software for some software and support and license in, with Computer Arts, Inc. and County Assistance. Second. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Filios? Aye. Motion is carried. Third item, renewal, memorandum of understanding, also known as an MOU for microwave T1 connection for radio network for the Idaho Military Division and our KCSO 911. Colin. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Colin McRoy, Kootenai County Sheriff's Office 911. Um, this is our uh, annual renewal for the microwave link down to the radio core in Meridian for our radio system um, beginning October 1st for the next fiscal year. Uh, no change to the contract other than the uh, 
standard uh, built-in 2% escalation for the cost of <coughs> okay. For a total contract, total, uh, or MOU total this year is uh, $32,433.47. Okay. Motion. I move that we approve the renewal for the MOU um, and the microwave T1 connections for radio network and our Idaho military division. I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. <clears throat> Excuse me, aye. Item number four, service agreement with Astro System for Motor and Motorola Solutions. Once again, KCSO, Colin for 911. Commissioner, Colin McGroy again. This is our uh, service agreement with Motorola for uh, brake fix maintenance service on the uh, radio system. Um, there is an increase over last year of 11000 $872.17, and that's their uh, typical 3% increase, plus uh, we did add additional equipment this year, so adding those to the service contract. Um, so total cost uh, is $173,044.56. Okay. And that's October through end of sector. It's our fiscal year. Next fiscal year. Okay. Yes. Questions? Okay, motion. I move that we approve the uh, service agreement with Astro Systems and Motorola Solutions and KCSO 911. Second. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye. Motions carried. Item number five, service agreement with uh, Mason Butte 911 Center again, Killarney Mountain Sheriff's Department. And I guess this has to do with Canfield Mountain and Divco. And go right ahead, Colin. Commissioners, this is uh, our HVAC service agreements with DIVCO um, for the next uh, service period, again, fiscal year 2020. Um, no increase over last year's totals. Uh, and so total cost for, there's an individual contract for each site that we're responsible for, for uh, but total is $4,871. Questions? Mm -mm. Motion? I move that we approve the service agreement um, for Mason Butte, the 911 Center, Killarney Mountain, um, and Canfield Mountain with DIVCO. I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye, and the motion is carried. Moving on to item six, approve the ballot order. The resolution 2021-92 to designate polling places for the upcoming election. Thank you. We have to have no, a uh, last minute from the Secretary of State for hmm. tomorrow, so I wanted to make sure you guys have an order. Oh, okay. Location. And that'll let... Uh, yeah, designate polling places, yeah. For November 2nd, 2021, that's the upcoming election uh, over a month from now. It's consolidated <laughs> elections. Go right ahead, Jennifer. Or is it Asa? I want to let Asa take it. Yeah. All She's right. doing great on this. <laughs> um, Asa, great for the record. Um, so we, um, Jennifer just gave you an updated ballot order. Um, we, in consultation with the state, there had been some questioning on if we needed to have a ballot face for the Shoshone County Fire District number two, because we have just a write-in candidate that's unopposed. Um, they mulled over the concept a little bit more and today let us know, after all, we do not need to run that on the ballot. So the only change to this ballot order is on the third page, second page, third side, I should say. You'll see on precinct 68, there is no longer a 68SH ballot code for Shoshone Fire because we do not have to place that on the ballot. Everything else is the same. Um, and just a little bit of background on the ballot order. Um, you can see on there we did a calculation of 40% of registered voters just kind of to give us a measure of what to look at in then we micro-targeted in different areas based on past turnout in different cities, based on contested races. Um, we did our best to order what you know we thought was reasonable for election day ballots on here. Okay. And we have right now, as of 922 absentee request, 6,714. Wow. And that first drop will be likely October 1st. It's required by October 4th that we mail them. Okay. So they would be going out the week after next? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Any questions for Asa or Jennifer? Motion. I move the, we approve ballot, the ballot order and 
Resolution 2021-92 uh, designate polling places for the November 2nd, 2021 consolidated elections. Second. <coughs> Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. <coughs> Excuse me. Aye. Motions carried. Item number seven, compensation analysis proposal with the Meriben. This is for the wage study. Human Resources, our director, Sylvia Proud. Go right ahead, Sylvia. Sylvia Proud, for the record. Um, so we will be conducting the compensation analysis, and we have before you a proposal with the Meriben, um, who can provide the services to us. And the purpose of the study is to analyze our salaries in comparison to other locations based on our selection of employers and locations. And on September 15th, the Board of County Commissioners approved the market area that we will be analyzing ourselves against, and they are Ada County, Bonner County, Canyon County, Spokane County, City of Coeur d'Alene, Boise, Post Falls, Spokane, and Spokane Valley. Um, and the outcome of our project is that we'll get external market data for the general and sworn positions. Recommendations will be provided for an updated comp plan that ties our internal uh, equity to market competitiveness so that we can attract and retain um, qualified applicants and employees. And then in the study, they will be looking at cost of living and cost of labor for that study so we can see how we compare um, cost of living wise to those other entities. Uh, the estimated cost for this service for fiscal year 22 is $3,490. Okay. Any questions? Motion. I move that we approve the compensation analysis um, with a Meriband. I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye. Motions carried. Item number eight, <clears throat> ICRIM policy year 2021-22, public entity multi-line insurance policy, HR. Sylvia? This, our liability insurance policy is with ICRIM, which is the Idaho County's risk management program, and this would be for fiscal year 22. The um, policy has been reviewed by legal. The county's premium will be $799,218, which is an increase of $21,162, or 2.72%, over last year's premium. And the premium, the way ICRIM factors the premium, it's based on three primary factors, claims activity, payroll, and property values. So if we have purchased um, a new property, that gets added into that factor. Okay. Um, our deductible is $3,500 for vehicle and property damages and loss. Um, one notable change to the um, one particular area is employment practices and liability deductibles. In fiscal year 21, it was $5,000. It is being it's increased to for fiscal year 22 to $7,500. Okay. So that is one significant change. Um, <clears throat> And um, we would appreciate the board's acknowledgement and approval of the process so we can continue to provide liability coverage. And we would um, pay ICRIMP in two installments if approved by the board. Yep, October 1 and April. April 1st, 2020. Okay. okay. So um, clearly the, oh, go ahead. No, I just was gonna say, I wanna make sure that we get that information out to the elected officials that that deductible has increased it to 7,500. Yeah. And that's key, since most lawsuits have to do with Personal. employee terminations. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and the board did do a memo back in November of 2020 advising the elected officials of how the process works so we can update it and advise them that the deductible has come up. So when you do that, then we will go ahead and send it out to the elected officials? Yes, yes, it'll be for you, the board's signature, yes. Thank you. So the purchase of the Kootenai Electric, or what we now call Kootenai North, obviously added to the premium. Yes. Okay. More property, more value. Okay, motion? I move that we approve uh, ICRIM mm -hmm. policy year 2021-2022 public entity multi-lines insurance policy. Uh, for the. That, that's fine. 
I think typically, do you, you want us to mention the payment has to be in two separate? You can mention it. Okay, um, if you don't mind, I'll just uh, amend that to say. You can add anything you would like. October 1, 21 will be the payment of um, $399,609 and then the balance April 1st, 2022 uh, with the same amount. Okay. And I'll so second that. that. <laughs> Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye, and the motion's carried. Thank you. Item number nine. Thanks, Sylvia. Maintenance agreement, uh, it says number two, but anyway, Office of Emergency Management and our specialty courts with H&H &H Inc. Information and our Information Technology Group. James. Good afternoon, Commissioners. James Mark for the record. Uh, this is a request to sign a maintenance agreement for two uh, multifunction printer copiers, one for specialty courts, one for okay. OEM. <clears throat> We've done the calculations and... Uh, between the maintenance and the toner and all that, the price per page is cheaper for H&H &H to do it than doing it ourselves. So IT's recommendation is that we enter a maintenance agreement with H&H. &H. Okay, with any, two. any questions for James? Motion? I move that we approve the maintenance agreements um, for equipment at Office of Emergency Management and specialty courts with H&H &H Inc. I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye. Motions carried. Thank you, James. Motions. Item number 10, consent to assignment of lease AAL-98-010, Resort Aviation Services with Resort Aviation Jet Center LLC at the airport. Is Stephen on? Kim. Kim's on. Oh, Kim, go right ahead. Hey, good afternoon, Commissioners. Kim Stevenson at the airport. Would we be able to combine 10 through 13 since they're all the same, same entity? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so these four leases, uh, they're just assigning the lease itself from the original entity, Resort Aviation Services, to the LLC, Resort Aviation Jet Center. There's no change in annual revenue. Uh, grand total revenue for them, $27,248.27. Okay, so we're combining items 10 through 13. And basically what we're converting to an LLC, is that it? Correct. Yep. Okay, okay. So I guess they're changing their status. Okay. Yeah. You okay, Bill? Yeah, I'm fine with yeah, it. Yeah, it's items 10 through 13. Go I ahead. can say that. It's just when... People are listening. They don't know what items 10, 11, 12, and 13 are. That's okay. Well, you know what? Let me do this. Um, okay, so what we're looking at here is basically uh, four contracts that we're looking at. Uh, that are uh, Four leases, excuse me. AAL 98-010, uh, 98-0005, and then we have 2009-010 and 2015-700. And these are, uh, I guess, title conversions from resort aviation to resort aviation. Um, is it Inc. or LLC? It's Inc. Inc. to LLC. It's Inc. to LLC. And you can just make a motion to combine the, the 10 as indicated. Yes, and it, it's 98-005, not triple zero. Oh, sorry. Go right ahead. No big deal. Um, I move that we approve items 10 through 13 uh, on our agenda for uh, consent of assignment of lease uh, regarding Resort Aviation Services, Inc. Okay. And I already specified the numbers. I guess we're... Are we okay, Dave? Yes. Okay. Wait a second. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Filios? Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Item 14, Administrator Contract for Fiscal Year 22 Public Defender Contract Renewal with Scott Noss, uh, uh, speaking for the Board of County Commissioners. I guess he's our administrator. That's right. Okay. He is. Um, Leanna is going to take it. Leanna Kaiser. Yeah, go right ahead, Leanna. Uh, so yes, this is our conflict attorney administrator for our public defender conflict attorneys. And this is our annual renewal of Scott Noss's contract. 
So this will take effect October 1st and it'll run through September 30th of FY22. Uh, okay. Um, there, the only change is an increase in his rate. His monthly rate has increased from 3,500 to 4,000 per month. That was approved in the budget. Got it. Okay. Motion. I move that we approve the administrator contract um, for the public defender contract uh, attorney, NOS, uh, for FY22. I second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Filios? Aye. Motion carried. Item 15, renewals for public defender conflict contracts. And the parties are as follows. Anderson, Chesbro, Cooper, Crocker, Haggerty, Finley, Frampton, Mehara, Nixon, Palmer, Pierce, Riyadh, Riffle, Romero, Schwartz, Schwartz and Swartz, I guess, maybe yes. okay, two different parties, mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of the BOCC. Yes. Leanna Kaiser again. Um, so these are our, our <clears throat> 15 conflict uh, attorneys, the ones that Scott Noss administrates over. And this is also an annual contract renewal that we do with our, our attorneys. This will also take effect October 1st and run through September 30th. We have a few changes in the contract this year. We have expanded the categories from three to five, and we've also increased the rates, and those were uh, approved in the budget process. And we've added a, um, a requirement for the conflict attorneys to submit an annual report to the Public Defense Commission, to the board, and also to the administrative judge. So those were additions to the contract for this year. Okay. Any questions for Leanna? Motion. I move that we approve the renewals for the public defender conflict contracts with for Anderson, Chesbro, Cooper, Crocker, Haggerty, Findlay, Frampton, Mahara, Nixon, Palmer, Pierce, Riyadh, Rilf, Riffle, and Romero Schwartz. And Schwartz. And Schwartz. And Schwartz. <laughs> Second. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Filios? Aye, and the motion's carried. Thank you, Leanna. Aye. Item 16, <clears throat> excuse me, contract for the approval of payment for election systems and software for our elections department. Asa? Actually, I'm going to start off real Go quick ahead, because he wasn't here back in uh, 2020. He was here, but in this role, <laughs> um, we had the DS850 we purchased in uh, fiscal year 20 along with 10 express votes. With that, we did a sales agreement, and we have essentially a ESNS hardware maintenance description with fees, license, and maintenance, and that's rolling over three years. But with that uh, initial agreement, we had to do an addendum, not committing future boards. So uh, for the purchase fees, uh, the maintenance and warranty, along with licensing fees, we have to come before the board yearly for that request, and that totals 30320 and that also breaks down into it's our it's our three DS850 machines and also our 60 express vote machines and our election night reporting software as well. Okay. And um, the payment will go out October 1st when, when that year starts. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Motion. I move that we approve the contract uh, and the payment for the ESNS um, 2022 service. I second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Filios? Aye. Motion carried. Item 17, contract for the approval of payment, 10X Software Solutions, Inc., once again, elections. Yes. Um, so for this one, so 10X is our vendor that we use for our, well, the state uses for their entire voter registration system, and then we use for our e-poll books that we use during early voting and at the polling places. And so um, very similar scenario, we, um, we have a yearly maintenance agreement with them per poll book um, that they provide the, all the help we need on the back end along with any updates, anything along those lines. So for this next year, uh, fiscal year 22, it's going to be $22,500 and that also will be paid October 1st. And all those are budgeted by the way. Yes. <laughs> okay. Motion. I move that we approve the <coughs> contract, excuse me, the contract uh, and approval of payment with 10X Software Solutions, Inc. and Elections. Second. Bill Brooks? 
Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye. The motion's carried. Item number 18 and 19, we can take in a single motion. It's resolutions 2021-95 and 96 to classify and destroy records uh, for the auditor, uh, respectively. Keith said I could do this one. Oh, go for it. Okay, so if it please the board, <laughs> the auditor's office has uh, collected a list of records we are no longer required to retain, and we would like you to approve a resolution to classify them and then destroy them. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Motion, please. I move that we approve resolution numbers 2021-95 and 96, which is classification and destruction of records per Idaho code. I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye, and the motion's carried. Item number 20, resolution 2021-99 to surplus property from the prosecuting attorney's office. I don't know that we need any. Is anybody on the line? There's just one glitch that um, this is an 85-15 split with the agencies who um, confiscated the property. And it's not, um, I guess I'll ask Terry, did you get an updated resolution to reflect that? Great. Okay, then we are good. Okay, motion. I move that we uh, approve resolution 2021-99 surplus property with the prosecuting attorney's office. A second. Commission, sorry, Bill Brooks. <laughs> I'm so excited about doing one, I'm just <laughs> shattered. You can't get over it. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye. Aye, and the motion's carried. Item number 21, the opioid settlement. Uh, or the application for the opioid settlement for the uh, county, I guess, to join in BOCC. Leslie, yes. did you want to? I, I will take this. Um, so on September 13th, a letter was mailed. It looks like we received it on the 15th. And it talks about uh, $119 million for Idaho counties and cities who agree to participate in an opioid settlement um, with about um, three or four major opioid distributors. And so there's some reporting um, requirements, there's an application requirement, and if the board is willing to uh, enter into this, then um, Nancy Pluff is willing to take it. Okay, any questions? I guess we agreed some time ago, I think, with the prosecutor mm -hmm. that we would proceed. Okay, motion. I don't know that we need a motion is just motion? um no she's just going to proceed to uh file oh, the application okay, and let us know what's involved fair enough okay so that concludes the action items our last one is status update mm -hmm. and okay the thank you first item is facilities expansion yep i um, am going to meet with um kcso the two uh, captains who gave us feedback on what the LCA architects proposed and those meetings will probably happen um, next week okay cool all right when you say captains who are they um, captain smart and captain Miller oh yeah okay. captain Deke also proposed but he just proposed building out the for the two pods and that's already an ARPA issue Okay. So that's kind of covered by them. Right. Pack Airport lease. Well, nothing to report. I just had one short conversation with Stephen because he was on vacation and then I was on vacation. So I just got back. Okay. Financial snapshot not due until the beginning of October. October 5th. Okay. Yep. Impact fee analysis that was deferred until was it the end of October? Well, it was sometime in October, hopefully before the end. Okay. Um, and then I've got the North Lot land sale, and this is specifically the lot that abuts the Music Conservatory. Uh, nothing further to report. I still have a call in to one of the owners, uh, which is uh, Steve Widmeyer, uh, as to whether they're willing to purchase the land. But the way it's looking, if that doesn't occur, We'll be putting in a fence and 
provide for a gate so that people who use our lot while attending any of the concerts or whatever, which is usually not during operating hours, mm -hmm. uh, can access from the parking lot. Okay. And then the last item is just the Skeeton Gun Club. There was yes. um, some emails going around that asked what the next step was. And I went back and looked at the, um, I don't know, did you get my email? No, go ahead. Okay. So it just was about when the last meeting we discussed it, I looked at the minutes and then I listened to the audio. Yeah. And essentially they're supposed to be presenting us to get the conversation started. Um, the Skeet Club is presenting us with a lease. I so. asked uh, Stephen about a, you know, appraisal, because mm -hmm. that's really where it has to begin. Mm -hmm. If we don't know what it's, what it's worth is, we can't do much in terms of... Wasn't yeah. that supposed to be... Waiting. Shouldn't we have already received it? Well, they haven't come out yet, as far I as I know. I think so, because Stephen said that they're months out in getting... Oh, kind of yeah. okay, okay. Well, that's not unusual. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The, uh, you had mentioned trying to locate something that's, at the tri tribal land. That's kind of a side thing I'm working on. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, then. So, all right. So, basically, the action item is they owe us. Yes. When they, yeah, when they present us with a lease, then we can discard, start negotiations, and then when, hopefully that will coincide with the appraisal coming in, and then all the mm -hmm. ducks should be in a row. Okay, so that concludes the status update. Public comment. I'll ask again, any public comment? Hearing none, 232 meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.